With the development of the global economy, the requirements for the safety and reliability of the power grid operation are getting higher and higher. One of the effective devices to ensure the stable operation of the power grid is the power transformer. For the power system, the power transformer test is of great significance and plays a key role. The power transformer is the most important equipment in the power system. In order to ensure the safe and normal operation of the power system, the transformer must be tested with professional experimental equipment for various mechanical and electrical performances before it leaves the factory and is put into use. The electrical characteristics and dielectric strength of the transformers are checked by means of measurements and tests defined by standards. The tests are carried out in accordance with IEC standard 76 power transformers. Voltage ratio and purpose of the measurement. The voltage ratio of the transformer is the ratio of voltages voltages in three-phase transformers line-to-line -line voltages at no load, E.G., 110,000 V by 10,500 V. The purpose of the measurement is to check that the deviation of the voltage ratio from the specified value does not exceed the limit given in the relevant transformer standard generally 0.5%. The connection symbol of the transformer is checked at the same time. Performance and results of the measurement. The voltage ratio measurements are carried out by means of a voltage ratio measuring bridge. The error of the bridge is less than plus or minus 0.1%. The supply voltage is 220 VAC. The functions of the bridge is shown in figure. The voltages of the transformer to be checked are compared to the corresponding voltages of the regulating transformer, which is provided with a decade display unit and located in the bridge casing. When the bridge is balanced, the voltage ratio of the decade transformer is equal to that of the transformer under test. The result can be seen directly from the numeral display of the bridge. Measurement of voltage ratio and check of connection symbol. Purpose of measurement. The purpose of the measurement is to check that the deviation of the voltage ratio from the specified value does not exceed the limit given in the relevant transformer standard generally 0.5%. The connection symbol of the transformer is checked at the same time. Performance and results of the measurement. The voltage ratio measurements are carried out by means of a voltage ratio measuring bridge. The error of the bridge is less than plus or minus 0.1%. The supply voltage is 220 VAC. The functions of the bridge is shown. The voltages of the transformer to be checked are compared to the corresponding voltages of the regulating transformer which is provided with a decade display unit and located in the bridge casing. When the bridge is balanced, the voltage ratio of the decade transformer is equal to that of the transformer under test. The result can be seen directly from the numeral display of, of the bridge. Bridge measurement of the voltage ratio. T1 transformer to be measured. T2 regulating transformer equipped with a decade display, P10 sequence voltmeter, U1 supply voltage of the bridge, U2 secondary voltage of the transformer. Since the measuring device is a single phase bridge, the voltage ratio of a pair of winding mounted on the same leg is measured at a time. It is to be observed that the ratio indicated by the bridge does not always correspond to the ratio of the line to line voltages. The result depends on the connection symbol of the transformer. For each winding connected to the bridge it is important to observe whether the number of turns relates to the line-to-line -line or line-to-neutral voltage. For example, the voltage ratio of a 120 by 21 kVYD connected transformer is 120,000. Root square of 3 by 21,000 is equal to 3.299V. The reading obtained from the bridge is to be compared to this value. The connection symbol of the transformer is checked in conjunction with the voltage ratio measurement. When the measuring leads from the transformer are connected to the bridge according to the relevant vector diagram in the table. The bridge can be balanced only if the transformer connection is correct. The voltage ratios are measured for each tapping connection of the transformer. In the report the specified tapping voltage ratios are stated, as well as the measured ratios and their deviations from the specified ratios. Winding resistance measurements are crucial diagnostic tools for assessing potential damage to transformers caused by factors such as poor design, assembly, handling, unfavorable environments, overloading, or inadequate maintenance. The primary purpose of this test is to identify significant differences between windings and detect any open connections. Measuring the resistance of transformer windings ensures that each circuit is wired correctly and that all connections are securely tightened. The winding resistance in transformers can vary due to shorted turns, loose connections, or deteriorating contacts in tap changers. 
Regardless of the configuration, the resistance measurements are normally made phase to phase and the readings are compared with each other to determine if they are acceptable. Transformer winding resistance measurements are obtained by passing a known DC current through the winding under test and measuring the voltage drop across each terminal ohm's law. Modern test equipment for this purpose utilizes a Kelvin bridge to achieve results. You might think of a winding resistance test set as a very large low resistance ohm meter DLRO. With an impedance test, we are measuring the losses in the transformer, the watts by power wasted or lost during electrical operation. The quality of construction along with the type of materials used in the building of the transformer's coil assembly play a role in determining the results of this test. Unlike the insulation and winding resistance tests, which serve as su supplementary evaluations for distribution class transformers, the impedance load loss test yields concrete results that can be taken at face value. This test may be used to confirm the design values for a given unit or a certain number of losses is requested by a customer on a new factory built unit. IEEE lists standardized impedances for distribution class transformers above 500 kVA at 5.75% plus minus 7.5%, but sometimes, customers will request something different. This can be largely accomplished with the design itself. The impedance percent IZ of a transformer is affected by the resistive percent IR and reactive percent 9 components of a transformer. It is during this test that the reactive and resistive components of impedance are identified, as well as the resulting X by R ratio of a unit. For reconditioned transformers, these values will be determined by how the unit was originally manufactured at the factory. Impedance load loss testing is a standard routine factory test IEEE C57.12.00, which is required for all new factory built Padmont distribution class transformers, and it is performed on all transformers that are repaired or reconditioned by Maddox. The tolerance from the specified value for two winding transformers is plus or minus 7.5%. For zigzag units, auto transformers, and transformers with three or more windings, the tolerance is plus or minus 10% IEEE C57. With an excitation test, we are testing the flow of magnetic flux in the transformer core. If the words magnetic flux sound a bit too technical, think about a simple magnet with two ends or poles one south and the other north. If you sprinkle iron shavings on a table near the magnet, you would see the iron shavings line up in long oval loops springing from one end of the magnet to the other. These invisible phenomena are referred to as magnetic lines of flux. These magnetic fields are all around us, and it is the same principle which is behind the invention of the directional compass. A transformer's ability to produce, to produce these lines of flux is what we are after here in the excitation test. To perform this test, voltage is applied to the low side of the transformer windings with the high side windings open, which allows the amount of magnetic flux required for operation to flow through the core. Another way to think of excitation is to think of it as the amount of work required to start the transformer. The quality of the core and assembly and its construction influence how much excitation is needed during energization. Imagine trying to roll a car with a dead battery down the street to a nearby parking lot. You would have to do some amount of work to get the car going, which would require a bit more heaving and grunting in the beginning, this extra heaving and grunting would merely be spent in getting the object out of its stationary state. In the same way, a poorly built or damaged core assembly will require more heaving and grunting when the transformer is energized. The additional work required at startup is what we refer to as in-rush current. The excitation current and the associated no-load loss are the power that keeps the core energized during normal operation. The quality, orientation, and construction of the laminated core steel in a transformer will determine the exciting current. For new distribution class transformers, the DOE has set minimum efficiencies in distribution class transformers up to 2,500 kVA. The routine test items for power transformers are as follows. 1. Insulating oil test. 2. Measure the DC resistance of the winding together with the bushing. 3. Check the voltage ratio of all taps. 4. Check the three-phase wiring group of the transformer and the polarity of the single-phase transformer lead wire. 5. Measure the insulation resistance of each fastener insulated from the iron core. The connection piece can be disassembled and the iron core with an external ground wire. 6. Test of non-pure porcelain casing. 7. Inspection and test of on-load voltage regulation switching device. 8. Measure the insulation resistance and polarization index of windings and bushings. 9. Measure the dielectric loss tangent value tan of the winding and the bushing. 10. Measure the DC leakage current of the winding and the bushing. 11. Transformer winding deformation test. 
12. AC withstand voltage test of winding and bushing. 13. Long-term induced voltage test with partial discharge test for winding and bushing. 14. Impulse closing test under rated voltage. 15. Check the phase. <laughs>